The Case of the Gasping Garbage, Chapter 3, Frog Hollow. It was Friday after school when Drake Doyle was once again busy with an important experiment. Test tubes bubbled and beakers boiled. Just as I thought, he murmured, my hypothesis is confirmed. He wiped the fog off his, his glasses and scribbled in his lab notebook. Just then there was a knock at the door. Come in, said Drake. Mrs. Doya popped her head around the door. You have a visitor, she said, a wet one. And in trotted Dr. Livingston. Mrs. Doya closed the door. Drake put down his notebook. This must be important, he thought, very important. Nell never sent Dr. Livingston unless it was highly important. Good boy, said Drake. He scratched Dr. Livingston behind his ears. Then he reached inside the pouch that hung from Dr. Livingston's neck. Drake withdrew a blank sheet of paper. He flicked on a lamp and held the paper over the bulb. Gradually, words appeared. Detective Drake, meet me at Frog Hollow ASAP. Not a moment to lose. Signed, Naturalist Nell. P.S. Bring an umbrella, etc. It's wet. Drake quickly pulled on his raincoats and boots. Gra he grabbed his umbrella on his way out the back door. Bye, Mom. I'll be at the Frog Hollow with Nell. Affirmative, said Mrs. Doyle. Be back by supper time. Drake closed the door behind him and pushed up his glasses with his finger. He whipped open his umbrella and said, Follow me to Dr. Livingston. Drake stepped off the porch into the rain, promptly slipped and fell with a splat. Dr. Livingston licked Drake's face. Drake struggled to his feet and off they went. Over hill and over dale, finally they reached Frog Hollow and there was Nell and her yellow raincoat and naturalist cap. She was examining something with her magnifying glass. What is it, naturalist Nell? Drake asked, bending down beside her. Besides being a superb scientist, Nell Fossey was also a naturalist. If it crawled, Nell took notes. If it hopped, Nell followed. If it grew, Nell drew graphs. Nell loved nature. Nature was her specialty. But today, Nell was troubled. Something was wrong, very wrong. Look here, she said. This is a leopard frog. In fact, this whole meadow is full of them. But you already knew that. Correct, agreed Drake. That's why it's called Frog Hollow. Every spring, Nell continued. Every spring, Nell continued. Female leopard frogs must find a pond in which to lay their eggs. So what's the problem? Asked Drake. Follow this frog and you'll find your answer, replied Nell. The frog began to hop. Nell and Drake followed with Dr. Livingston close behind. The frog hopped over a log. It hopped around a rock. It hopped through the tall grass. It hopped and hopped and hopped. And then something terrible happened. The frog hopped onto a road and zoom squish. Ew, said Drake. Ugly, said Nell. Woof, said Dr. Livingston. Now what do we do, said, asked Drake. Follow me, said Nell. After looking in both directions, Nell led the way across the road and down the other side. And there, sitting all alone with not a frog in sight, was a pond. I think I see the problem, said Drake. Indeed, answered Nell. This road was built just a few months ago. In order for the female frogs to lay their eggs, they have to cross the road, finished Drake. Exactly, and you can see the results for yourself. Nell sighed. The whole leopard frog population is in danger. If they can't get to the pond, there won't be any new frogs. So what can we do? Asked Drake. Nell set her mouth in a firm line. Drake could tell she was serious, dead serious. Come to my house, she said. My mom's still at work, but I'm sure she won't mind if we make some road signs. 
We must save the frogs. Check, said Drake. Nell's bedroom was like a jungle. Nature headquarters, they called it. Terrariums, aquariums, fly traps, and ant farms lined the walls. Paper vines hung from huge paper mache trees. A moist, hamsterish smell of sawdust, fish food, and lizard breath clung to the air. It was even a little steamy. Drake's glasses fogged. All afternoon they worked. They outlined and gluttered, colored and glittered and painted. They glued and stapled and taped and hammered. Finally, they were finished. Slow down, the signs said. Frog crossing, nature in progress. There, Nell nodded with satisfaction. That should do it. 